Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, I'm going to rebuild a 18-year-old sub. This is really one of the first big subs that Orion offered in the early 2000s, and uh, I think going back to 1999 was the first release, but this one looked a little bit different, even though it was the same sub as that first release. We're going to make some improvements to this sub as well, not just rebuild it. So this one, had cotton spiders, there was a spacer between them, a uh, single spider on the bottom, single spider uh, just above that spacer. The leads ran in between the spiders, down to the two terminals over here, and it had a rubber surround on it. Now, the rubber does do fine for uh, long-term longevity, um, UV resistance, that kind of thing, but the foam materials of today have gotten much better than they used to be. The rubber surrounds tended to be uh, not very rigid and uh, they would get kind of floppy so when your spiders inevitably got floppy as these have then it could get very sloppy turn into a mess and eventually cause a problem and kill it so we're going to make a few improvements to this one and one of those improvements is going to be the cone we're going to use a modern foam surround on this cone the actual shape of the surround happens to be the same as the original so cosmetically this is going to look very very close if you didn't know the difference uh, between the rubber and the foam or you couldn't really tell it right off you would never know this would look any different so we're going to keep the same look we're going to improve function and i salvage the dust cap so we are going to use the original dust cap on this sub this one did have a crack in it right here but i've repaired that as best i can so this should not give us a problem so we're going to maintain a factory look very close there will be a, a few differences like with the spider color and the surround material but we're basically going to make this like new but better another upgrade we'll be making to this sub is the coil this one does have just a little bit longer winding length and the diameter on the outside is slightly larger so we should have just a little bit more bl and a little bit more x max so this should be a little bit stronger a little bit louder and will definitely have reliability because this is an american made coil when this sub was made originally it also had an american made coil this entire sub was made in the usa as you can see i've already torn down this sub and cleaned it up and if you'd like to see how i've done that in another video here's the link moving on to this sub first things first we already know the coil is going to fit because i measured that properly ahead of time before acquiring the coil so we're good there we do need to find what kind of shim will fit in there and for that we will use sheets of paper this is paper that you probably already have laying around we don't need anything fancy we can just use paper now we know we've got the right number of shims in here or pieces of paper uh, when you can slide the coil up and down relatively freely but it will stay on its own and if you grab it at the bottom it won't actually move around on the pole at all so we've got it tight enough but not too tight that it will cause a problem coming back out so we can slide the coil inside our spiders but we may have to bore this out it doesn't go on perfectly uh, sliding on there too easily so we do have to bore that out and for that we're going to use a rasp on a drill Now I've got this coil marked right here and the purpose for that mark is that should be right where the top of the top plate is. The center of the top plate is going to be halfway down the coil. So I've taken half of that top plate, gone above that and that's where the top would be if we can actually see this line at the top of the motor. As you can tell from this we don't have any vents. So I can't do that. So we have to do a little bit of guesswork here to get as close as possible kind of judging uh, where we can see a gap uh, from pushing down here you know maybe this high so we want to match the gap that we see here with the gap that we see down here there are some other ways you can go about doing that it's a lot easier if you have a proper former height which we don't have I already know this is way too long and we're gonna have to cut it so what I'm gonna do here is I've got the spiders pushed way down here at the bottom and I'm going to push the coil back through the spiders so it will stay exactly where we need to. We'll kind of figure out the depth and then I can mark the former where it needs to be cut.
Now with the coil in place on the spiders and lined up, we can slide the cone on and see how far we've got to go to mark this so we can take it back out and cut the former to the appropriate length. You want to make sure when you're pushing the cone down that you don't move the spider at all because again we have not glued this in yet. Now with the cone in place we can mark this and we have to leave enough space on top to get a glue join in but not so much that we can clear this dust cap because it is inverted. It's going to be a very short height from the top of the cone to where we have room to glue on. Now with the coil marked I wrap this tape around it so I have a nice clean straight line all the way to mark it for when I put the saw to it and make sure that we're staying straight. I've also pulled the leads back because they did end up up here and we don't want to cut through those. So I've pulled them back all the way back to here so we make this clean cut right across here and then our former will be the correct length. Now the coil is cut to the appropriate length, we can get everything back together and if you were wondering what I used to cut that, it was one of these. It's an air saw with a fine tooth blade. It makes a nice clean cut as long as you hold your hand straight and follow the line. I've got the coil inside the spider and I've slid it in and I put a glue joint across the bottom so that's going to ensure that that stays in place when we put the cone on. These leads are round and they're kind of thick where I would normally use a flat lead that will slide in between the former and cone. That is not the case for this so I have put little notches in this cone so they can slide up through. Some people opt to put holes through the cone but one reason we can't do that is because this dust cap comes down so far uh, they would hit the leads so we aren't able to do that. So now we can slide the cone on and get it lined up and push the leads through making sure that we have the leads for the cone and for the spider passing through it. Now as you can see here we do not have much of a lip down here for us to glue onto and it has to be that way because of how the dust cap is. We want to make sure that it doesn't smack it and it does come down very low. So we don't have very much, we can only put a small amount of glue in here. But first we've got to solder the leads from the spider to the coil. Now with everything soldered, we can put a glue joint on top all the way around to get the cone glued to the former. With the top joint glued, now we can do the joint between the cone and the spider because on this particular example the cone does not go all the way down that was just not something we get worked out to get the look 
and fitting on this basket so we do have to put a glue joint in there as well as on the bottom of the spider. Now we've got the middle joint glued, the bottom glued, the top glued, and this is basically a drop in. So from here, we can drop it in here. With the shim in place, we want to put glue where the spiders will go on the basket, but not the surround. And I'll show you why in a second. So we're going to get this glued in place. When you put this in, you want to make sure that your leads are lined up with your terminals because it will be very difficult to move once they're glued in. Now it's not a bad idea to use clamps on this spider just to make sure that everything is tight. Now that we've got this glued in place, I've taken the clamps off after spraying it with accelerator. And now the reason why we didn't glue down the surround just yet. We've got our binding posts here, we've got our leads right here, but we have to solder them. And it is much easier to solder those when you can peel this up and look straight down to solder these on. So that's what we're gonna do next. With everything soldered up, now we can glue down the surround and we'll put clamps on it as well to make sure that it is absolutely secure. For this I'll be using E6000. With the glue for the surround now dry, we'll put the gasket on, taking the shim out, and the only thing we have left to do is put on our dust cap. And I've scuffed up the back of this so it's not smooth, we'll have a good binding surface for it. We don't have a ridge in this cone, so we're gonna have to be very close on our judgment. Fortunately, this is a pretty wide dust cap and it's pretty close to the edge of the surround. So I can eyeball this pretty well and we can go back and measure if we need to to make sure it's precise. I've done this a lot of times so I can get it very, very close to being absolutely perfect without measuring. So we're going to put some glue on the back side of this. Then I'm going to flip it over. You see I have some tape that I can grab onto to place it down in there uh, since this is kind of awkward to get in there. And then we'll put some weight, but we've got to do something 
a little bit tricky to do this. So let's get glue on it first. Now the outside edge we want to apply pressure on, but it's very difficult to do that with any weight. So I've got this ring that happens to be the same diameter as the outside edge of this dust cap. And then we can put one of our dust caps on top of it so our weight that is curved will fit right on. Now we just have to let this sit for about an hour and our dust cap will be on and we will have a complete working sub that we can test. And here we have our finished product. An HCCA 12 rebuilt to look as close to the original as possible with some slight improvements to the spiders, the leads, and the surround. So now we can put it on the test bench, make sure everything plays fine, there's no rubbing or any other funny noises. So we can do that now. And there we have it. Everything is fine. No rubs, no funny noises, no pops. And this will be ready for the customer after I build another one just like it. If you enjoy videos like these, comment below and let me know. If you have suggestions for future videos, comment those below as well. One question I get asked a lot that I'll go ahead and answer, can I just build a recone for your fill in the blank whatever sub that isn't ours? No, I have to have the sub here. By the time you ship it both directions, it may or may not make sense. In this case, we're talking about a classic sub that uh, you can't just go buy another one and they wanted it restored, so here we are on that. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook for exclusives. That is in the description below. There's also a link to our Patreon so you can help fund doing way cooler things in these videos. Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already and give us a like on the video. It's what drives us doing these things. The more views we get, the more of these we'll do. And I'll see you again on another Tech Stuff Tuesday.